Now that we are recording, I will turn this over to you. It is your session. Thank you. Ooh, look, we got some movement on the board. <laughs> Greg has taken the lead. <laughs> and uh, do we still have some people filtering in or just go ahead and get started? I would say go ahead and get started if it's anything like it was yesterday. People kind of come and go pretty frequently through the session. That's good. Do you want me to stop sharing, Sasha? That is. I'll give him a couple minutes to play yeah. the game. <laughs> Greg blew somebody up, it looks like. <laughs> New, for folks who are newly admitted, you may want to repost the information on how to access the Yeah, game. the access is 86268. There's a link in the chat as well. <laughs> Look at them flying through. Uh -huh. Looks like we might have some people who know the material we are going to present, which is still good. <laughs> we still have some good information for you. <laughs> and there is a QR code too, if you wanted to scan that with your mobile device. Ooh, somebody's got their cannon. Who are they going to take out? <laughs> Fun. Okay, well, if you want to stop sharing, Tabitha, I'll go ahead and get started so we can make the most of everybody's time. That's good. Oh, host partic disabled participant screen sharing. <laughs> Oh, you might not be. I'm not a host. <laughs> Sorry. That's Sasha, okay. Hang on, I'll grab that. I'll take <laughs> I'll take care of that for you. Um guess we Sasha, why am I not seeing <sighs> it's S A C H A. Yeah, and it should be alphabetical. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Here we go. Well, for some reason you were alphabetized at the top. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> might be because you were speaking and it might have just floated that way. But there you go. That's you are true. now a co-host. Okay. And I can share. So you should be able to see my um, PowerPoint. Is that right? Okay. So we just want to welcome everyone and thank you for attending our presentation today and for playing our little assessment quiz. Hopefully you found that kind of fun while we had people filter in and kind of get situated here. Uh, hopefully we're not all looking like this guy who's dreading being back in front of the computer. Um, today's journey is not a trip through the Scottish Highlands. Sorry, I'm sure we'd all enjoy that. But our journey instead is going to start with some introductions and then we'll look at some different types of assessments and assessment techniques before moving on to some technological tools that are available to help you engage your students. Lastly, we hope to allow the majority of the time to collaborate with your peers as you explore some of the ways that you can use these assessment techniques and technological tools that we'll cover in order to engage your students. So let's get started with some introductions. My name is Sasha Johnson and I am a senior instructional designer at Idaho State University's Instructional Technology Resource Center. I have been working with faculty at ISU since 2005 and I really enjoy helping faculty use technology to create authentic and meaningful online learning experiences that foster student learning. So with me today are my colleagues Tabitha and Daphne and I will let them introduce themselves. Hi all, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to work with you all this morning. I am Tabitha, I'm an instructional technologist. I've been working with faculty at Idaho State University in the Educational Technology Services since 2015. I take pride in helping faculty maintain a student-centered focus in their course design in both the physical classroom and the virtual classroom. Hi everyone, I'm Daphne Dunn. I'm a, also an instructional designer at ITRC. I support faculty to design and develop online courses in professional development here at ISU. So now we'd like to take a few minutes to learn a little bit about you. So you can use your smartphone or your mobile device camera to scan this QR code, or you can use the URL, and I think Tabitha will paste it in the chat to open a quick poll activity. And I will open it up. Oh, goodness, I didn't restart it. 
So here is how to participate. Again, let's give you a few minutes to get in here. Um, looks like we've got people joining, so that's great. And again, the link is in the chat and you can use, it's nice that you can use your mobile device camera without a QR reader to access these sites now with the QR codes. So we've got a lot of folks in here. We'll go ahead and get started. Here I'd like you just to give us a one or two description, a one or two word description of how you've been teaching, whether it's fully online, high flex, in person, both. Um, you can submit more than one answer. You can like other people's answers. And then you can also include um, how long you've been teaching this way. Is this something you've been doing for 15 years or is this something that you've had to transition to in 2020? 15, all right, somebody is doing it for years and online seems to be the majority along with hybrid. And who knows, <laughs> yeah, who's, like counting? who's counting, who's <laughs> counting. But yeah, online seems to be the biggest one. And we did have a timer on here for one minute. So we'll let the time run down. Um, 15 years online, wow, since Corona. So we do have some newcomers to online probably and pivoted. Um, so we probably have a mix of all different skill sets here. So that's a nice, nice group to have. Um, next, we have a little question about how familiar you are with formative and summative assessments. So you, do you know the difference between these two assessments as well as why and how each one would be used? Again, we should have a timer on here, I thought. And you should be able to submit yes, no, unsure. I have one person who's confused. Do you want to ask Mine, in the chat? Mine or? says heads up voting is closed. Oh, you can't vote anymore. Did I lock it? There we go. Okay, one minute counting down. Thank you for unmuting and, and letting us know that. So yes, we've got some people who know the difference between formative and summative assessments. A couple who are not sure. One who doesn't know. This is good. Even if you are familiar with it, we still have some good things for you, I think. But about 80% so far are familiar, 75. Got about 30 seconds left to get your answers in. Got a good mix. It looks like we've got most of the answers that we're going to get. So about 70% of you are familiar with formative and summative assessments. So that's good. Because whether you've realized it or not, what we have just done is used a type of assessment to engage you as learners in our virtual classroom. So in general, assessment involves setting goals and describing clear outcomes for students, as well as evaluating student performance using various measurements, determining changes based on what you get from those measurements, and then setting revised goals as necessary. So the two types of assessment that we're talking about are formative and summative assessments. Formative assessment can be thought of as assessment for learning. So it involves looking at students' work during the process of learning. And these are activities where students can practice with the content, but then fail gracefully before they need to be able to demonstrate mastery of the content. Summative assessment, on the other hand, is assessment of learning, which is looking at completed work. And summative assessments are often used as evidence for other levels of assessment, like um, program and institutional level assessment processes. And these are activities where the students do demonstrate their mastery of the material. Um, looking at this in a simplified version, when the cook tastes the soup, that could be considered formative assessment because they're using the, um, the feedback that they get from tasting the soup to determine whether or not changes need to be made. And summative assessment would be when the customer tastes the soup. So again, summative assessment is going to determine the quality of learning that has taken place overall. The results are typically used to make changes in a lesson, a unit, a module, or a course in general that's going to affect other students, future students. And summative assessments are used to measure student achievement at a specific point in time or to certify competency and to maximize student learning. The faculty role in summative assessment is to administer these assessments consistently and to use those results to modify the lesson unit module or course as needed. And the student role is going to be to study to meet the standards or the learning outcomes and to strive for the highest score possible and avoid failure in order to demonstrate mastery. So some examples of summative assessments would be exams, papers, and projects. 
students. Formative assessment involves students and instructors in an ongoing dialogue and with descriptive feedback and reflection included. So the results of these assessments are used to adapt the instruction and identify areas for review for the current students. Its purpose is to promote improvement of learning during the learning process and to help students hit the target and to involve students in that ongoing assessment of their own achievement. So the faculty role is going to be to inform students of the targets or the learning outcomes and to modify instruction on the fly if needed or provide review opportunities as needed, as well as to involve students in that process. The role of students is to strive to understand the target and to act on the feedback they receive from you in order to improve and then to work towards success. Some examples of some formative assessments are journals, pretests, and quizzes. So you can employ formative assessments and feedback to actively engage your students during class time. And that can be whether you're teaching online, in person, or using some combination of the two. So building on that, Tabitha is actually going to talk about some formative assessment techniques that you can use to help keep students engaged. But before I turn the time over to her, I wanted to ask if anyone has any questions about these types of assessments. You're welcome to unmute or um, put it in the chat if you have any questions, but if I don't see anything, I will go ahead and turn the time over to Tabitha so she can talk about some formative assessment techniques. Thank you, Sasha. So yeah, we're going to talk about how we can use these assessment techniques to engage your students in a fun, easy, and in a real-time way. I'd like to start by asking the group who is familiar with the acronym CAT. And if you've used a CAT or formative assessment technique during lecture, be it synchronous or asynchronous, to answer this, you can choose a reaction in the Zoom toolbar or participants list. Mark yes or no, or give me a thumbs up if you have used a CAT before. We've got some, some yeses, some thumbs up, and we've got some no's. Perfect just scrolling through and seeing everybody's answers. Mm -hmm. Great, so what is a CAT? Classroom assessment techniques are a relatively quick and easy formative evaluation method that helps you check students' understanding in real time. These formative evaluations provide information that can be used to modify and improve course content, adjust faculty teaching methods, and ultimately assist with student learning. Formative evaluations are most effective when they are done frequently and that information is used to effect immediate adjustment in the day-to-day -day operation of the course. So this means by incorporating these activities into your lectures, you're taking the information that you are gathering using these assessment techniques from the student and using that to alternate or make immediate changes to that day's lecture in real time. There are three categories of CATs based on what they are used to evaluate. There's course-related skills, student attitudes, values, and self-awareness, and student reactions to instruction methods. Before we go over some different sample types or techniques for course-related skill cats that you can use in the virtual classroom, would anyone like to unmute and ask a question or ask in the chat? I like that Jen said she Googled cat when she entered this lesson. Okay. <laughs> and you may have gotten this GIF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He's so cute. Okay, well, I'll move on then. Someone asked what the three types are again. Okay, yeah. So the three types are course-related skills, student attitudes, values, and self-awareness, and student reactions to instruction methods. Thanks, she said. Okay, perfect. Awesome. So the first one that we're going to go over is something that instructors can incorporate. It's called the muddiest point, and you can use this in your everyday coursework. <clears throat> a muddiest point is a quick monitoring technique in which students are asked to take a few minutes to write down the most difficult or confusing part of a lesson or lecture or a reading. An easy way to create a muddiest point could be creating a Google Doc with a list of course content covered and ask students to describe what they didn't understand and what they think might help. 
they can look as simple as this. You can see here, so say I'm on module one for that weekend, I'm assigning them three chapters of reading. I'm gonna share this Google Doc with the students. So while they're doing the reading or covering the material, they can actually come in here and ask their questions. You can share it once and refer back to it throughout the course and at the end or the beginning of every class lecture to get an idea of where your students are struggling in the course material. For your students, this is a nice way to ask those questions anonymously. They might not want to ask in the virtual classroom. This gives them a chance to, to participate in and take an active part in their own learning and understanding. Does anybody have any experience in using Muddiest Points in their classroom? I don't see anything in the chat to that effect, but Greg did say this is a great idea. And then the, the SEL, um, social emotional learning type of cat is a great idea as well. Okay, yeah, that is a great idea. Okay, I'll move on then. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the Utilize Background Knowledge Pro. Similar to Muddiest Point, this gives you real-time awareness of where your students are and the understanding of the course content. And having a good grasp on where your students are in their comprehension of course content could save you from over lecturing on a topic students all have a good understanding in or give you the opportunity to find where a majority of the students are stuck so you can spend more time in that area. This could be to offer a low stakes quiz in your LMS or a poll in the beginning of your Zoom meeting. You will notice in this meeting we did both. We gave you a fun interactive board game in the beginning of our presentation, and Sasha asked you some questions on what you already know about formative and summative assessments. You can do, use this doing a free tool like Kahoot, polling in Zoom, or create a quiz in your LMS, or even the free board game I sent out today on QuizWizard. These are all interactive, engaging ideas for your students to participate in the virtual classroom. The last example we will go over is an exercise called 321. This is a course related skill that asks the students to evaluate themselves and their learning. You can ask the students to participate in this during the live class session using the Zoom whiteboard or the chat feature like we've done here. The 321 is so you'll ask your students to come up with three ideas or learnings from what was presented. Ask them to come up with two examples of how the ideas can be implemented and ask the students to come up with one unresolved area or a muddiest point. These prompts are interchangeable and these are just some examples. You can ask other questions like what the student thinks the main idea of the lecture was, what they think they'll be tested on. I would like to use this activity now in this session. We're gonna share a Google Doc and I'd like each of you to come up with one activity idea for how you used these assessment techniques in the past, whether you knew it or not, either synchronously or asynchronously. The, the Google Doc should be in the chat and I can share that as well over here. Yes. Everybody should have editing access. Let's make sure. Yep. Okay. The URL is in the chat. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We've got some folks in there, so that's good. Yeah. I always like the names they give people. And then I did like one comment we had, I've done something similar, but didn't call it that. So a lot of these things okay. are things that instructors do naturally too, whether or not we have that label to it. Um, these are probably things that you were doing, whether in person or online to check in with your students. We have a comment from Jennifer in the Google Doc. Yeah, so this can be any kind of thing you've used in the past, any kind of cat you might have used in the classroom, whether you knew it was called a cat or not. And you can also use this time to brainstorm some ways that you would use one. Yeah. I like students provide quotes from a literary text followed by their interpretation and one question for the class. Oh, post-it notes. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so true. So many people don't want to ask questions because they're afraid they'll look stupid or, you know, so it's good to have it anonymous so they're not embarrassed. I like to provide quotes from a literary text. Exit tickets. Mm-hmm.
I see somebody uses Jamboard. That's great. I was going to say that would be a good one for the post-it notes, mm -hmm. that or Padlet or Flipgrid. And the muddiest point in a discussion board. I like that as well. Okay, it looks like everyone's stopped writing, so we can go on. Oh, no rush. That's right. Just like in your classrooms, give your students time to respond. Yes. Don't be too afraid of the dead, dead air. I always think of the Ferris Bueller's day off, the teacher, where he's asking the questions of the students, but he doesn't give them any time to respond. <laughs> Oh, I like that you have your students come up with test questions. That's great. Mm -hmm. Ask students, ask questions ahead of time, especially with uncomfortable topics and answer the questions in class without calling out. Who asked it? Mm -hmm. Margaret, you asked if all these will be shared at some point and you all should have access to this Google Doc. We can put it back in the chat and you guys can keep all these activities. But we've got more to come too, so we'll share all of those at the end. And yeah, we're going to share, I did share a link to the slides, but we'll also share them on Discord um, and with the Northwest eLearn folks, since that's who we're presenting through. And we'll keep the links and everything active so that you can come back to them. Yeah, explaining this to a friend. That's so that's very true. Anytime you're asking somebody to teach it to someone else, that really helps solidify their understanding. These are all some really great and fun creative ideas. The wonderful thing about a virtual classroom is you get to integrate tech tools in an easy and fun way. So now that we've covered some of these classroom assessment techniques, Daphne is going to cover some tech tools readily available to you to integrate into your classroom. Before I hand it off to her, does anyone have any questions or different ideas that you wanna talk about? You can unmute or put it in the chat. Looks like we're good. Daphne, if you want to take it from here. Yes. So I'm going to share my screen. Just follow up with the slide. Oh, get rid of this one. OK, so there are quite a long list for tools available for cats when you are in the virtual classroom. Today, we are going to share some tools you might already be familiar or already not. Uh, or not. So first is Zoom. It's so popular, even my kid wanted to name our new puppy Zoom. No, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, we recommend using to record a lecture and post it on the course page before you start in your class time. So the student able to have the time to familiar with the content or material they were going to talk or discuss in the virtual class time. And also, that will help the, in other words, the meeting times for the class to review and you can have the student to do activities during the class time, like to do the discussion um, using breakout room, ask them to post their discussion form directly or work with the group work. And also there's annotation tools um, supplied from the Zoom. So you can use the annotation to either use the whiteboard or use the annotation to help the student follow along with what you were talking about. And also the breakout room, uh, that's what we were going to do the next. And breakout room has two different options so far with the new mm -hmm. Zoom update. You can do assigned and also you can do the self-select 
for the breakout room and assign a topic and then report back. That report back is very important things. Uh, yesterday, there a section we're talking about, if you don't ask the student report back, they will probably just do something else when they were in the breakout room. So definitely ask them to find a representative or making a note to report back after the breakout room. And also using the breakout room as a group project. Um, we really wanted to encourage a student to collaborate to each other. And it's hard, sometimes it's hard for those students to find the same time, get together outside of the class time. So find some time in the class sections and allow them to have the time to work together. And that will, will be a great deal for them to able to exchange their, uh, their opinions, ideas, and form their presentation or their finish the group project as well. And there's a polls you can use. You can uh, preload the polls in the Zoom or you can directly pull it out. And you also can use the Google form or other third party tool to do the polls as well that we will talk about later. So we have the whiteboard here, we mentioned it earlier. And also we can use the old classroom idea about cold calling. So choose the student at a random. Um, the old school way is write a name on the pop stickers and the chosen randomly. And also you can engage with the participants and address the questions while you would do the cold calling. And the other part is the LMS. There are some tools you can use in your LMS too. So for example, in ISU, we are using Moodle. We have feedback, choice, and a form we can use, as I mentioned earlier. You can just limit, make sure the student have the course page launched side by side while they are attending your virtual classroom time. And in here, I highly recommend students using their regular computer um, attending the virtual class time so they can have a full function of the computer, not just limited by their uh, mobile device. And you also can pop, use the pop quiz, say, okay, the next 15 minutes, please go into your uh, LMS, which is like our case is Moodle, go into the Moodle, Moodle and click that uh, quiz and finish that with the next 15 or 20 minutes. So that really can help the student stick with you, follow along with the whole class time. And also there's a Google tools. We experienced lots of Google tools yesterday and today we have the gym board and um, which is interactive whiteboard, but it's able to have a different pages and it also able to share and access after course is over. And you can use the Jimbo or as a collaboration creating and learning tool as well. So slides, that's what we're going to use in our breakout room. You can use the Google Slides for presentation and ask the students to use the, the different slides and then create it in a smaller group and present it when they come back to the bigger group. And Google Form, you can use that to as a polling tool or a feedback tool or like the three, two, one cat things we have mentioned about earlier. Just ask the student simply typing their answer back to the Google Form and you can either display or demonstrate later on in the class time. And also the Google Docs, we just used it earlier. And there are a long list of the third party tools we can choose here, like we had Earlier, most of them are fairly easy to use and provide some features for free. So for example, we had um, Google Clap earlier. So Google Clap, it can see is interactive activities and it is variety of the uh, question type you can use, but downside is for the free account, you only can use two questions as a free account. Yes, um, I see the question from the, severe server and those quite uh things i list here they do have the free account you can use but they have a limitation for example the peer deck i mentioned here you are only can have so many let me see you can have you have to log in several times and they integrate with your google slides and the pay feature is the analytics and also the uh, student report. You have to pay and get it. 
And also the Kahoot here, they are so popular, everybody probably used that before. So for the Kahoot, you only can have 10 players with your free account and 100 questions for per game. So if you have a large class, you probably want to group them up and stay in that 10 players limitation. And we'll club we mentioned earlier and pull everywhere is kind of like a very uh, usable tool for me. And they have unlimited questions and also 25 maximum audience size for a free account. So that's the, um, the third party tools we choose in here, but there's a lot of uh, student response system here, the Nearpod, uh, the, I think we have, they have the same presentation time as us right now. The Nearpod, they have the Nearpod, they have a free account as well you can use to help you, that you engage the student. So for our now, our next, we will go into virtual collaborations. So I'll new, now we will create three breakout rooms for hands-on activity for next 20 minutes. We will have a Zoom, LM, LMS, third-party tools, Google tools for you to choose. Once you get into the breakout room, our facilitator will be with you and have a Google slide presentation for you to break our rooms, break our room and brainstorm some ideas. After 20 minutes, we will come back to the main room and have you uh, volunteer or uh, chosen team leader to report back to us, uh, report back to the, great, uh, the bigger group. So I can see we have the breakout room here open already. So how many people stay in the, I will stay in the main room until everyone goes. Yeah, and if you have any questions on how to join a breakout room on the bottom tools bar, you should see like a, a four squares and you can open those and choose which one you wanna be a part of. There's Zoom tools, Google tools and LMS third party tools. Yes, so if you can see my screen here, there's your breakout room choice here. Looks like I've got some people joining mine. Yeah. So I can see some people join me. So we have 19 people in the main room yet. Still have 14 haven't decided. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks like the moderator will remain in the main room. So if you'll help, if people need help getting to their rooms, I'll go join the, the okay. breakout room. Sure. Because it looks yeah. like the moderator will this, go. Yeah, this is Kristen. I can hang out here. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. So much, and and then they you just need anybody who joins us to come in to some of the other rooms, correct? Yes. Right. Yep. And they can choose. So Perfect. yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So is there something special we need to do to get the button for breakout rooms? Because I saw when they were sharing their screen, they had a button that said breakout rooms, but I don't seem to have that button. Um, you should be able to join a breakout room, but um, you won't be able to create them because you're not a host. So do I just click the link to the Google Doc? Is that all I have to do? Or is there something to do in Zoom? Um, I, yeah. Sorry, it's been a minute. Um, I'm sorry, I was typing a message to one other person. Give me two seconds. I apologize. Just we're, we have a thing where we're not admitting people with names we don't understand in waiting rooms. I was trying to message whoever it was. Um, now, has it been a, where's, 
let me see if I can figure out how to, it's been a minute since I've joined a breakout room in there. So I'm trying to remember what the attendees see. Um, let me see if I can join this on my phone. Um, there should be something across the bottom that says breakout rooms. Um, I can assign you to a room. Do you have one you'd prefer to go into? You're muted, Jacqueline. Uh, the Google tools. Google tools. And I'm, there we go. Okay. Let me find you, Jacqueline. Assign to Google tools. There you go. This is Isla Moore. I'd like to please go to the um, third party tools. Got it. Thank you. So I do see three folks who are still in the main room and that's fine if that's what your preference is. If you'd like some assistance getting into one of the breakout rooms, um, drop me a message in the chat and I can get you into a room. Ben, third party tools, got it. Um, so Susanna, the um, breakout rooms are discussing um, Zoom tools, Google tools, and LMS slash third party tools about um, their use as course assessment, uh, classroom assessment tools. Um, so the, the presenters are each in a different room. There's three of them um, as are a rough, even roughly even split of the attendees.
suddenly realizing there's no reason why I'm typing all of this when I can just talk. Um, the folks who are in the breakout rooms are um, discussing, uh, what are they, three different rooms, Zoom tools, Google tools, and um, LMS slash third party tools. Um, they'll be in those rooms now for about another six and a half minutes. So you can hang out here or I could assign you to one of those rooms if you wish. Okay, uh, do you have a preference about which room? Zoom tools, Google tools, or LMS slash third party. Okay, no preference. Um, I'll go ahead and pop you over to the third party one.
So we have four seconds remaining for our breakout real time. I think the other two is coming back. I have to close some tabs here. <laughs> and one of our groups just started talking and it's time to close out. <laughs> just got going. We were just getting warmed up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Does it look like we have everybody back? All of your breakout rooms are closed. Yeah. So we should all be back. Okay. So we're going to come back and do a little bit of debriefing. How's that? Um, Daphne, Tabitha, do you want to share your screen and go over? Do you have any volunteers who want to talk about your ideas or? We do have volunteers in our group. What? Okay. We have a great. Do they want to share their screen or just you share it? And We don't write. have much uh, cooperation writing creating there, but we have exchanged the experience and ideas. Great. Go ahead, Ben, or Greg. Who was it? Yeah, okay. Greg, thanks. Oh. Um, I'll just go quickly. We talked a lot about uh, a bunch of different tools. Um, the primary one I would say is Pear Deck, which Daphne um, uh, led the, the session with. So she demonstrated it uh, during the, the session. Um, and then we also shared tools that we're commonly using. So Kahoot, I think, was the number one tool that came up. Um, but also uh, uh, Hypothesis um, is a third party tool that is uh, really effective because, um, especially with Canvas, you can use it in Canvas so students don't have to go to another website or um, leave the Canvas experience in order to use it. Um, we also had a brief conversation on perusal, which is similar uh, to uh, hypothesis with social annotation uh, functionality. So yeah, a bunch of great ideas came up. And is that something with perusal and hypothesis um, that you could kind of, well, it would still be limited, but Google Docs you could use for comments, inline comments and things like that, but it doesn't have, I don't, I don't think a lot of the same features where it would be like a PDF or a textbook and things like that, right? Is that perusal? I'm not sure about the interaction interfacing with um with Google Docs, but uh, not to put you on the spot, but Isla or Ayla? Uh, yeah, it's both? Isla. Isla. Um, so we're not a Google campus. So um, Hypothesis integrates right into SpeedGrader, um, which I love that feature. Um, when I go to see what students have annotated, it pops right up into SpeedGrader. I use this as a super low stakes assessment, very, 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 very formative assessment because I just want them to engage with the text. Sure. And Perusal is very similar to, um, and it allows you to annotate podcasts and videos as well. So um, it's very been cool. a game changer on our campus. Yeah. And and that's a free one, or it has free Perusal is free hypothesis. Is not free. Okay. Um, but they're doing a pilot right now, um, and we're in get, we're part of that pilot. So I, I okay. hopefully we're gonna go all in. We'll see. Nice. Good to know. Thank you. And thanks, Greg. Were you done? I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just. Um... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. How about you, Tabitha? Do you want to go next? Did your team have a volunteer? Anyone? Anyone? I don't know that we have a volunteer, but we came up with some some ideas. Mostly, we talked about Google Docs. We talked about our Google tools. We talked about Google Slide, Docs, and Jamboard. And there was some people that had not used Jamboard, so they came up with some ideas for that. And most of them kind of are along the line of um, brain dumps, brainstorming, um, trying to figure out how we can grade using these tools in the classroom as well. And then Pam had a, an interesting question, and maybe some of you have ideas for it, but she, she teaches math. And so integrating these kind of tools with math can be hard. And maybe some of you have come up with some ideas for that in this room or have some suggestions. 
Well, I wonder if if things like Jamboard and the whiteboard could be done as collaborative problem solving if, if the students could work in groups and help each other or um, was it Travis that was in my room that was mentioning how he does coding classes and he uses the um, the reactions to sort of see if students are understanding the material or if people need additional one on one help and then he can use the breakout rooms to move them into that with the TA or with himself so that he can help explain more is that kind of what you're thinking or is it just yeah i think how that's to present a great um, idea math problems online right and work through them right yeah and um, another idea that they came up with was using jamboard to present a problem that was maybe wrong and having the students figure out what was wrong with it absolutely you can yeah. use annotation tools or even the commenting tools and um, google slides jamboard anything like that to um, point out what's wrong, do a critique of a problem or how someone went about solving the problem or find where they went wrong in a problem. Could use it for worked examples for sure, I think. Yeah. So then my group went through some Zoom tools for um, engaging students. And one of the things that came up was again, leave time for reflection too. give your students time to reflect on things. Don't just um, pull the Ferris Bueller teacher and answer the question for them. But then I think Lori Piccolo had mentioned when she talked about this, that you should leave time for reflection for the students, um, build that time in. And then we talked about breakout rooms for group collaboration or troubleshooting, like Travis had said, to see if he needs to send in a TA for help using those reactions for quick check-ins. Um, short questions, find out who needs individual support. And then Len shared with us something called Teacher Soundboard. We're not sure if everybody's familiar with this, but I will share. I will share this. Um, I'll make sure I share that. So he shared this um, Teacher Soundboard, and we'll include a link to this in, in all of the resources that we'll share with the conference um, participants. And these are just things that he uses sparingly. Uh, in his teaching. So if he does ask a question and doesn't get any responses, it might be something like the crickets. <laughs> I, I usually that. try to share the tumbleweed GIF, you know, yeah, <laughs> tumbleweeds going across. Um, will it stop? <laughs> it's a long one. <laughs> um, but there's things like ta-da. And then he said that there's this other Zoom call soundboard um, with some other uh, sound effects that you can use sparingly again. Um, this was the one I was referring to earlier. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Except he asks anyone, anyone, and then answers the question. So leave time for that. Um, what else did we talk about? Uh, the we new have a question from yes. in the chat. That's a, it's at a G. Oh, okay. Isla, it is, um, it actually looks, it has the um, fave icon of a Google slide up here, but I don't know if that's because it came from my slide. Well, it says it's a Google Docs presentation. So someone put it together and shared it online as a Google slide, it looks like. And we'll go ahead and share that link to that one. And then this one is just a website, looks like. Um, but we can share the links to these with you too. And then the other things that we talked about, hopefully that helps answer your question, Isla, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. Yeah. and. The other thing that we talked about is the new feature of using PowerPoints as a virtual background. So Len brought up the fact that there is this new advanced feature where you can share your screen, but share a PowerPoint, and then it turns into a more um, engaging version of you. I'm not a weather person, obviously, because I don't know which way to point, um, but then you can engage more with your presentation as you're talking to the students, similar to how you would in your classroom. So that's a nice feature that you can use as well. Very cool. Yeah. So those were some of the ideas that we came up with. Um, anybody else is welcome to share some more. I will do a new share. And we can go back to our presentation. Maybe am I sharing the right thing? Do you see our collaboration report slide? Yes. All right. So did anybody have any challenges that came up or any other ideas that you want to share before we um, sum up? You're welcome to unmute, throw it in the chat. 
I'm not hearing anything. So we'll go ahead and say, you know, um, with any class learning activities, the main focus is to facilitate students ability to meet those learning outcomes. So students have to be engaged with the material and attend to the material to learn from it. And thinking about what you want your students to take away from the class period, the module or the course in general, and then working backward toward that um, can help you design activities to keep them engaged during your class time. Because um, we want them to be actively learning, which is doing something and cognitively engaging with the material as you're going through it rather than passively listening to it. And that goes for, like Isla said, with the hypothesis, getting them to actively engage with the text and not just your lectures. So formative assessment and CAT techniques can be used to get students reflecting and engaging. And the CATs that you choose, of course, are going to depend on what you want your students to leave with um, and what you want them to be actively doing. And throughout this presentation, we really tried to model these best practices by keeping you engaged. We used that WooClap activity. Um, Tabitha had the quiz wizard game at the, at the beginning, which was kind of fun as a pre-assessment to kind of see whether some of you were already familiar with formative and summative assessments. And then just remember to leave some time for your students to respond. Um, like I said, I set the WooClap questions up for a one minute timer, which can seem like an eternity when no one is responding. Um, but students may need that time to think about the questions too. And then one other thing we did was had to break into groups so that you could actively engage in ways to use these tools in your own teaching. So again, we do welcome any questions that you have and we're always available. Um, well, not always, but always available by email if you ever wanna reach out to us, we can definitely um, brainstorm some more ideas if you have some. And we will share these resources with you too and want to thank you for coming. Thank you, Travis. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks, folks. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Sounds good.